A while back, Wolfie VGC, a VGC champion level player, also a YouTuber, made a video ranking out the 18 types of Pokemon competitively for the VGC. If you want to check out that video, link in the description, of course. And uh, I thought it'd be fun to rank out these types for Pokemon Go, because Pokemon Go is very similar to, like, you know, the VGC in terms of typing. Um, but how we use these types is a lot different here. It's not a, uh, you know, two on two, it's 1v1, and we also can't swap our Pokemon freely, so the defensive type of a Pokemon ends up being a, a much larger deal here in Pokemon Go than it is in the other games. And then, of course, we have more limited move pools as well, so that also gives it a, uh, a little bit of a unique twist. So I'd say overall, when it comes to this tier list, where Wolfie ranked his out based on the coverage and the defensive typing and the moves of the Pokemon. Uh, this is mostly going to be focusing on the types as a defensive type with a nod to the Pokemon that are this type and attacks that are also this type. But like the larger piece of the pie is definitely going to be the defensive type. If you want another way to think about this too, you got uh, stat product, right? The attack times the defense times the HP. High stat product Pokemon are generally good. And uh, if you resist an attack or are weak to an attack, that kind of uh, influences your stat product in a way because it increases or decreases your defense against those specific type of attacks. So you can see how a good defensive typing can really make or break a Pokemon competitively in Pokemon Go. So starting out alphabetically here, we're going to go with bug type Pokemon. And uh, I think it's either a like mid or low C tier or a very high D tier. And I think to kick things off, I'm going to put it in the C tier. This video isn't scripted, so I might change my mind about a subtle placement here or there throughout the video. Um, but for Pokemon Go, I'm going to give Bug a solid C tier. We don't have a lot of good Bug type Pokemon in the game right now, uh, but I think defensively Bug type is very is pretty nice right it resists ground and it resists fighting which is good it's weak to rock which is bad um but you know rock plus either ground or fighting is perfect or near perfect coverage so you can't expect to you know resist everything and be neutral to everything that would make bug like an even higher tier right um so i think it's a good defensive type it also pairs really well with uh fighting and steel which is why the better bug types end up being fighting and steel bug type pokemon because uh they resist the rock type attacks so then rock becomes neutral and then those pokemon can benefit from bug types resistances to uh fighting and ground type attacks so it pairs pretty well with stuff what keeps bug from really elevating though being a good type is that its attacks are complete dog water. I mean, for one, the coverage of bug type offensively isn't good, uh, but then you couple in the fact that bug type attacks also aren't good, so they don't add anything to a Pokemon other than that defensive utility. Like Megahorn and Bug Buzz can kind of break through stuff because those are very powerful charge moves, but they're also very expensive charge moves, and they have a relatively poor distribution, so... Yeah, and then when it comes to the other bug type attacks, they're like just bad for no good reason other than to make bug types bad. So I think bug type as a type will never crack past B tier as it is right now, like in Pokemon in general, just because of the offensive coverage being bad. But because the attacks are so bad, it definitely puts it in a solid C tier and uh, makes it kind of like a high D tier almost at times. Going on to dark types. Dark types are tricky. I, I almost want to give them an S tier, but for now, I'm going to say A tier. A uh, big thing about dark types is that they uh, resist and are super effective against both psychic and ghost type Pokemon. So merely resisting a type is already a pretty huge deal. But when you've got, you know, a same type attack bonus boosted damage back into them, uh, then that's really nice. You get a huge hard counter kind of situation. Think about Umbreon versus any ghost type Pokemon ever, right? Uh, one big thing that keeps them from being in S tier and keeps them hanging out in A tier and could push them down in the B tier is that they don't really have any good fast moves. They got Snarl and that's about it. But basically every single Snarl user would much rather use Shadow Claw because Shadow Claw does that much more damage and uh, technically has better neutral coverage. Um, but without being able to chunk stuff with a stab attack, I think that really limits Dark as a type, despite having a pretty fantastic defensive type going on. And I guess another thing to hold it back with the defensive type too is that Counter is one of the best fast moves in the game, one of the most ubiquitous ones, and it hits it super effective, so that makes Counter even better there. And then being weak to Charm is also not a great look either. But I think overall, there's no denying that Dark type Pokemon are extremely powerful, uh, mostly because of like how bad they mess up Ghost type Pokemon. And then I guess between Ghost and Dark type Pokemon, uh, Psychic types 
types just can't really get ahead. Then moving on to dragon type Pokemon. Um, you know, in VGCs, I'd put them in S tier, right? But in Pokemon Go, I think they sit firmly in A tier. And that might blow some people's minds because like Altaria, really good. Giratina, really good. Dialga, uh, really good. You know, Palkia, really good. Uh, so you got a lot of really good dragon type Pokemon, top of tier lists, right? But I think they're mostly like uh, doubling up with the goodness of the dragon. I mean, A tier isn't bad. A tier is extremely good, right? Um, but then they also have a really good secondary typing elevating them even higher. Uh, I think when it comes to the defensive utility of dragon types in Pokemon Go, it's uh, underutilized compared to how it is in the VGCs because dragon types resist electric, fire, and uh, grass, and water, right? But the only type that really matters for a dragon type to resist is probably going to be the water type because electric types are poorly enabled in Pokemon Go. Uh, not, not a lot of good electric type attacks happening here, so resisting them, not a big deal. Fire types have a very similar situation going on. Not a lot of good fire type attacks. And then grass type attacks are pretty good, but we don't see a lot of them because grass type coverage is usually just kind of there for Swampert, almost exclusively. So the only type you're really resisting here is going to be water type. And when it comes to water type resistance, it's mostly just resisting Swampert, one Pokemon out of six on a team, you know? So that defensive utility doesn't come up all that much it is nice and that's why dragon types are pretty good act really good actually um, but yeah another thing holding dragon types back is uh, steel resists them fairy double resists them and hits them back super effectively and uh, I think it's kind of almost limiting for them that they're super effective into themselves because when it comes to drafting c6 teams or even GBL teams uh, you know dragon being weak to dragon can put you behind even further if you are already behind on hp and shields and stuff with your dragon and then people being prepared for dragons because a lot of dragon type pokemon are really good you know invites a lot of fairies and steels so as a type dragon has a lot of issues a lot of dragon types are really good um are they really really good because they're dragon types i mean that is part of the puzzle there um but i don't think it's the biggest piece is what i'm getting at uh, next type here, we got electric types, and it's tough. I think they're either B tier or C tier, and I think for now I'm going to put it in C tier. problem that electric has is uh, it doesn't have any resistances, really, to speak of. Uh, flying type as damage is poorly utilized. Electric type as damage is poorly utilized. And uh, the other one, steel type. Steel type damage is poorly utilized in Pokemon Go. So you're not getting a lot out of being a electric type defensively. Everything else is like neutral to it. And having stuff be neutral to you, that's fine. You're not weak to it. But you really do want resistances so you can play up those, you know, matchup advantages. And then big problem it has is ground type being so powerful and uh, almost everywhere when it comes to teams hitting it super effectively. Like with the uh, recent season update, Lantern is really good now. Lantern's pretty powerful in GBL, but people haven't seen a lot of Lantern, if any Lantern, when it comes to the C6 meta at the uh, tournaments. And a big reason for that is just ground type damage, right? Lantern is strong. It's a water electric Pokemon. It can manage matchups pretty decently, uh, but it can still fall victim to Galarian Stumpfisk landing Earthquake or Nidoqueen landing Earth Power or Swampert landing Earthquake. One Earthquake basically takes the thing out where it's, uh, you know, Surfs and Thunderbolts don't do nearly enough damage to pressure them the way that they pressure Lantern. And then when you couple in the fact that there are Pokemon that hard counter Lantern in the meta yet, such as Altaria being one of the most dominant threats and uh, Grass types being on the rise, uh, definitely, definitely sucks to be an electric type for the most part. Uh, a lot of electric types that we do see working out pretty well are usually enabled by a good secondary type. I think electric type coverage is pretty good. I mean, you got the OG bolt beam combo, um, but because electric type attacks are relatively weak outside of like wild charge in Pokemon Go, uh, you don't really get to utilize it that much. And then as I'll talk about with ice type, uh, ice type attacks also have a pretty poor distribution. Uh, ice punch isn't that great. Ice beam isn't that great. Blizzard isn't that great. The only like good ice type attacks are icy wind and avalanche and not a lot of good Pokemon are given those attacks or the Pokemon that do have those attacks are for the most part carried by those attacks. So yeah. So once uh, electric gets a bit better and bolt beam combo starts to become more of a thing for more species, maybe electric type could start to bump up a little bit. But as it stands, 
Now, I'm not the best type on the block for Pokemon Go. Then we have Fairy Type, and I'm going to give Fairy Type an S tier. I think a huge thing with Fairy Types in this game is that they are poorly enabled. Just about every single Fairy Type Pokemon has a bad move set in some way. But at the same time, despite that problem with them, a lot of Fairy Type Pokemon are at the top of the meta. I mean, Azumarill owned the Great League meta for generations. Now it's starting to fall off a little bit, but there's no denying that Azumarill is one of the best Great League Pokemon ever. And Bubble is bad. Ice Beam is bad. Play Rough is not a great attack, like at all. Hydro Pump, not that great. Azumarill, with its bad moveset, uh, is kind of carried by its good stat product, but also because of the fairy defensive type. They even nerfed Bubble from like a bad attack to a worse attack, and it didn't even shake Azumarill that much because it mostly came down to the defensive typing and the bulk of Azumarill. We look at Zacian, and uh, you know, close combat is great, like fantastic, one of the best moves in the game. Wild Charge is also pretty fantastic too, but it has Play Rough, and Play Rough is bad. Snarl is not great at all. It's a pretty poor attack, especially if you're not a dark type Pokemon. It has energy gains, which can enable some Pokemon, but it's not a good attack. Uh, Quick Attack recently got buffed. Quick Attack's like, Quick Attack's pretty good now, right? And a lot of Zashians are switching to Quick Attack because Snarl is that bad, and Quick Attack at a base isn't like that great. So, but Zashian's at the top of the meta. One of the best Pokemon in Master League, probably the best Pokemon in Master League, uh, just being carried by that fairy uh, fairy type going on there. So, so far we don't have any really greatly enabled fairy type Pokemon, right? They don't have like, not a lot of fairy types have a good move set, but because fairy type is so strong, uh, fairy type definitely on top. A lot of people talk about buffing steel type attacks, like the damage of them to kind of rein in fairy types. And I don't think that'd really do a whole lot because steel type has poor coverage overall. I think something that should be buffed to maybe rein in the fairies a little bit more would be fire type attacks in the game because fire types, you know, resist fairy. And then, um, so fire types being stronger and more present could do more to rain in fairy type Pokemon. And then of course we got poison type update being pretty strong there too. But I don't think a big steel type buff would do a whole lot to uh, hurt the fairy meta, if you will. And uh, I think Pokemon Go has been kind of doing a good job of, uh, you know, keeping a good handle on making sure that the fairy type Pokemon don't get too out of control. Next up, we got fighting type. And uh, I'm going to give fighting type B tier. I think as a defensive type, it is uh, less useful than probably bug, right? So it makes me kind of want to put it into, uh, into C tier almost. Um, big thing that fighting type has for it, like the main saving grace of fighting type Pokemon is that they get a same type attack bonus on counter and counter is the best fast move in the game. Uh, maybe second to shadow claw, maybe, maybe tied with shadow claw. Uh, but a fighting type using counter is just really, really powerful. You can chunk down so many things. You can even chunk stuff down through resistance with a fighting boosted counter. And a lot of the best fighting type Pokemon in the game, uh, just so happen to use counter. So uh, yeah, I think that puts fighting in a pretty good spot. Fighting definitely has some huge drawbacks though, you know, one being the fairy type weakness and then another being flying type weakness, even though it doesn't come up that much. And then you also have ghost types, which double resist fighting type attacks, which can be uh, very problematic for a lot of fighting type Pokemon and definitely reins them in in a pretty big way. Um, some of the better fighters can overcome these disadvantages. Maybe not so much the fairy type disadvantage because of charm just being so strong there. Um, but like, you know, we've got like Scrafty, right? Um, and then you've got Metacham and uh, Deoxys, and those are good fighting types too. They uh, kind of double down on the ghost weakness, but their big thing is that they're the uh, counter users that resist opposing counter users. Uh, it's all about the counter, really, when it comes to fighting type Pokemon. And I guess when it comes to the Swords of Justice, they have Sacred Sword or Secret Sword or whatever, which is extremely strong, and they're now enabled by Double Kick, right? Uh, so I think it's mostly like the attacks that exist in the game that are very, very strong, that happen to be fighting type, that is kind of carrying the type. Uh, but we just can't ignore the fact that stab boosting those already crazy good attacks is really good. And I guess uh, resisting dark is a little bit of a cherry on top for them too. So yeah, overall, really good, really good like type offensively, especially with the attacks that are distributed and given within Go. But maybe, maybe like low B tier or something like that. Then when it comes to fire type, I want to give fire type B tier. 
But I think with where fire type attacks are in the game right now, I have to give it C tier. I think if we had like a season eight update, you know, the big update that put Nido Queen on the map and poison types in general, if we had like a season eight update for fire type attacks, they would easily be a B tier. But as it stands, I feel like fire types offensively are um, not really enabled. Fire type attacks generally aren't that great. And uh, with wall rain no longer being a big meta threat for the Great League, uh, there really isn't a whole lot of incentives to bring a fire type Pokemon in the C6 format. Uh, so I think all these factors combined definitely make it C tier. But if we had like a buff to uh, Ember and Fire Spin, and if maybe they made like Flamethrower or some of the other charge moves, like not complete garbage, <laughs> right? I think fire types could rise up. Um, and then like when you look at the starters too, I think it kind of highlights the weakness of the fire type Pokemon. Uh, you know, the Hydro Cannon has the uh, 40 energy cost, uh, Frenzy Plant 45 energy cost, and then Blast Burn. 50 energy cost so that's a really steep energy cost uh, for the damage and so if it had like a lower energy cost maybe we would see typhlosion or charizard you know be more open meta threats uh, they are a little bit in the ultra league especially in limited formats in the ultra league like we saw triple fire teams in the ultra league premier cup classic when you know wall rain and trevenant were on the top there so i think fire types like do have the chance to rise up and be pretty strong dominant good threats but right now the attacks are just a smidge too weak um so i'd say high c tier definitely could be b tier in the future will anything be d tier that is the question uh but moving on to flying type this might be a bit of a hot take but i think flying as a type in pokemon go especially is gonna be s tier hear me out so like bug type bug types like strong quality is that they resist ground and they resist fighting Flying double resists ground, and it also resists fighting, right? Also shares a weakness to rock-type attacks. Uh, wouldn't you know it, flying resists and is super effective against bugs, so sorry bug-type Pokemon. Uh, but I think, yeah, overall, as a defensive type and as an offensive type, flying type is definitely the way to be. If you asked in, like, 2022, right, at, at least the 2022, like, championship series, uh, before Wall Rain got nerfed, I'd probably give it like an A tier just because Wall Rain was so ubiquitous and so present everywhere. Uh, if Ice types got better enabled, like Ice type coverage at least got better enabled, uh, and if Electric types became less bad, I could see Flying type falling to like A tier, maybe even lower with future updates. But in the current state of the game, yeah, Flying type is just, it's just good. Uh, it's got the uh, resistances that matter and the coverage pretty neutral. A lot of the flying type attacks aren't that great. And I know some people are calling for flying type buffs. Like they want stronger wing attacks. They want stronger air slashes. They want aerial ace to no longer be aerial ass uh, to better enable flying type Pokemon. But I think that might be a little bit of a slippery slope until we get more electric and ice type moves distributed to Pokemon for coverage or like less uh, or the moves that are already distributed were buffed a bit. Um, then I think we could start thinking about buffing flying type moves a little bit more. But until that happens, I think flying types are just kind of too good right now. Um, I know in some of the regionals, double flyer teams have taken over. And a little anecdote here too is I do have a patron, has been one of my patrons for, for ages here now. And uh, he hits legend consistently. Every single season hits legend with a double flyer team. I won't expose this team to you because I think that'd be a little bit unfair. And I've tried using the team myself. And it's really difficult to pilot, so, like, I don't want y'all to think I'm lying if I tell you what the team is, too. But every single season, he hits Legend with the same double flyer team. And I think that just kind of speaks volumes to just how useful flying types can be. And now that, you know, Registeel and uh, Walrein aren't in the meta as much as they used to be, flying type is just even better. So, yeah, S tier, for the time being, could get reined in with future updates. Then we got ghost type Pokemon. Ghost type is also another automatic S tier for me. The big problem that they have is going to be the dark type Pokemon, which resist them and hit them back super effectively. Uh, but if you look at some of the best ghost type Pokemon, they put a lot of pressure on those dark types, uh, not named Umbreon, right? Like Obstagoon and Scrafty are supposed to be like the ghost counters, right? And, uh, you know, Sableye with the return, you got Trevenant with the seed bombs. 
they put a lot of pressure on those dark type Pokemon. Uh, so that just speaks to how good those Pokemon are and how good ghost type attacks are and like the kind of coverage options that they have. Uh, but it also rests upon like how good ghost type is in general. As a defensive type two, it double resists fighting type attacks, counter being one of the best fast moves, if not the best fast move in the game. So double resisting that is a huge deal. And then you double resist normal type attacks. We don't see a whole lot of normal type attacks, but body slam is one of the most annoying attacks in the game to have to go up against and double resisting it. Well, that's just, that's just good, right? And then little known fact, a lot of people overlook this, but ghost type actually resists poison type hits. And so with Nidoqueen being this really big threat, Toxapex arguably being a new big threat in the game, uh, we haven't had an open Great League season with it yet, so it hasn't really been realized. It's a little bit of a two new Pokemon. Some people say I'm overhyping it, uh, maybe a little bit. We have to see what it does first, right? But that all aside, resisting poison is, is very nice. And then Ghost type also, as an offensive type, has neutral coverage into basically everything except for uh, Dark and... Um, normal type attacks like normal type pokemon so ghost really like ubiquitous coverage shadow claw arguably the best fast move in the game or second to counter uh so that's extremely good and then you got shadow ball one of the better charge moves in the game so you have the combination of shadow claw and shadow ball usually that's like a perfect combination from heaven uh so yeah yeah no ghost types definite definite s tier for sure i don't know what could really rein them in the way pokemon go is um like maybe just better neutral attacks in the game existing like i don't know electric and ice type moves becoming better or the better moves getting distributed a little bit more could start to uh you know weaken the ghost type dominion but as it stands ghost types definitely on top like yo we'll talk about giratina being such a strong dragon type pokemon uh, but I think it's really the ghost type that's doing the heavy lifting there when it comes to our good friend Tina. The next up we have grass type. I think grass type is a tentative B tier. I feel like it might be a little bit lower, maybe. It depends on how you look at it. I think B tier is pretty safe for grass type. Uh, as a defensive type, you're um, resisting water, which is really nice. You're resisting hydro cannon from Swampert, which is a pretty big deal. And you're also resisting the earthquake from Swampert and earthquake from other Pokemon, which is also a pretty big deal. Um, I think the thing that kind of holds grass types back, though, is that a lot of stuff resists their damage, like, you know, dragon, flying, uh, resists them, grass resists grass, uh, bug, I guess, resists them. Steel type, we haven't talked about steel type yet. And then poison type resist grass so grass like offensive coverage wise getting stab on your grass damage isn't the most impressive thing in the universe a lot of pokemon will carry a grass type attack to uh threaten swampert with uh but being a grass type yourself can be a little bit of a liability in the competitive scene um especially with flying type pokemon being more powerful than ever these days like they had a little bit more play when wall rain was on top because ice is scary right but it's a water type pokemon so you can bully it but a lot of the top flyers right now grass types don't really bully that well or they're jump pluff and they're a grass type themselves you know what i mean uh so i think grass damage is good in the game but being a grass type is is fairly neutral then we got ground type and uh i almost want to give it s tier but i'm gonna give it a nice a tier right uh ground type is really nice because it gives a stab bonus to your strong earthquake earth power uh ground type attacks and ground is a really good you know offensive coverage type move in the game so boosting those attacks always pretty good and if you're a ground type pokemon you got a better shot at getting that mud shot and mud shot is also really fantastic but i think uh ground type as a defensive type can be a little bit of a liability at times your resistance to electric doesn't really come up all that often uh you know is it that it doesn't come up often because ground types bully electric types so well so electric type can't really fly that well um that could be part of it which you know makes that pretty strong uh, but i think for the most part because we don't see a lot of electric types you're not really utilizing that ground subtype a whole lot like swampert i think would be a lot stronger would be a lot more of a huge crazy threat if it wasn't a uh sub ground type pokemon and back before they nerfed weather ball politoed um you know it was like the same idea but arguably better than what uh, Swampert was because it didn't have that ground subtype. So I think that the ground subtype can be a little bit of a liability as a defensive type, but it's also like pretty neutral at the end of the day too. So 
Yeah, it also resists poison, which is really nice. Uh, you don't really think about it that much because the better ground type Pokemon are Nidoqueen. Poison resists poison already, so it doubles up on that, so you don't really notice it. And then it uh, also is, uh, poison's also resisted by steel type. So you got Galar Stumpfisk, triple resisting poison type damage. Like, who cares, right? So we don't really think about ground type as a defensive type. Um, you know, maybe... I almost want to give it B tier because of it. I think maybe this tier list might be like a little bit blinding to me because of, uh, you know, the Pokemon that are good happen to be ground type. But I think the boost to their damage is also pretty significant. I'm going to keep it in A tier, I think. Uh, ground types are on top, right? And then boosting that ground damage is also a reason for it. So, But defensively, I think it is a little bit more on the awkward side now I think about it a little bit more. And if you think about it too, ice type coverage, you know, being poorly distributed in the game also plays into that because a lot of the ground type Pokemon were kind of sweating it a bit when Walrein was on top. Now Walrein's not exactly on top. So yeah, that definitely is a bonus to the ground type Pokemon as well. So I don't know. I think this is uh, one of the weirder ones for me to think about when it comes to the criteria for this tier list. So uh, feel free to disagree with me because I'm not exactly too certain on the placement myself. Uh, then we've got Ice Type. And Ice Type coverage, fantastic. Pokemon having strong Ice Type moves, that's always a great thing. But it's so bad as a defensive type that I have to give it D tier. Like, you want your Pokemon to have Avalanche. You would love your Pokemon to have Icy Wind. You'd go insane if those things happened, right? Uh, but your Pokemon being an Ice Type. That's when the jazz music stops because so many things are super effective into ice type Pokemon. You know, fighting type attacks, super effective. You've got uh, rock type attacks, super effective. You know, ubiquitous coverage moves, two of the best coverage moves in the game. Also, when paired together, super effective into you. That's a that's a super bad look, right? Uh, so why would you want to be an ice type? Well, maybe it's for the resistances. But what do you resist? I think they only resist other ice type attacks. I think that is their one and only resistance. So what's the point, right? So we've got some good ice type Pokemon. You know, we've got Walrein. That was super good. We've got Lapras, also pretty good. But I feel like those Pokemon are kind of carried by the water subtype in a way. It's just really nice having that ice type coverage. Man, if they could, they would wish away that ice subtyping. Um, and I think that ice type more so than anything else in this tier list kind of highlights uh, how much of a defensive focus there is in Pokemon Go as far as you not wanting to be an ice type. Like, look at Frostlass. It's an ice type, right? But it's ghost carried, right? It double resists the fighting. And one of the bigger reasons why Frostlass isn't like open meta on top more often than not is because that ice type is such a huge liability. I mean, uh, Obama Snow in the current state of the 2023 championship meta could be an extremely powerful core breaker, one of the best things around, right? But that ice type brings in so many weaknesses that it ends up being a, a bit of a liability on your team. So yeah, ice type as a defensive type, bad. Ice type attacks as a coverage type, good. Pokemon Go should distribute more ice type attacks to balance things out a little bit more in my opinion, but yeah. Now for this tier list, D tier. Uh, normal types. Normal types? are interesting because they double resist the ghost type attack but that's it that's all they do and when it comes to normal types that are enabled in the game i think all of them have play into ghost type pokemon and then there's also meloetta um that exists in the master league if you can get the xl candy for it that's also pretty good uh you know riffing off the ghost type resistances but then also having some you know interesting unique qualities to itself i think Normal type deserves a B tier. I think it's pretty pretty neutral as a type. The ghost type resistance is good, but then you need your attacks to like enable you to actually counter ghosts. Because like the moment you don't have Lick or the moment you don't have Dark type attacks, then uh, ghost type Pokemon just kind of walk all over you. And then you also have the weakness to counter damage, which also isn't great. And then you also don't have any other resistances to speak of. You also don't have any other uh, you know weaknesses aside from fighting type to speak of. And, uh, you know, that kind of counted against the electric type Pokemon in a way, right? But electric types, you know, double resisted by ground, that's not great. Super effective hit by the ground, also not great. Uh, one of the best types in the game, you double resist it. 
pretty fantastic. It also helps that Body Slam is one of the more annoying neutral attacks in the game, and they get a same type of attack bonus to it. So yeah, I'd give I'd give normal type B tier. Then we got poison type Pokemon. And uh Oh man. Uh I think A or B tier. It could go either way. Cause like poison jab, really, really good. Stab boosted poison jab, crazy good. Uh, you know, resisting fairy type attacks, also extremely good. But the ghost type factor and the ground type factor, those aren't that great. But counter resistance is really great. I'm going to give them A tier. I'm going to give Poison type A tier. Yeah, Toxapex would not be the talk of the town. People wouldn't be sweating bullets about Toxapex maybe dominating the meta if Poison type wasn't a good type. So I'm going to go with A tier there. Season 8 did a lot for Poison type. If Season 8 didn't happen, uh, Poison type probably would be like C tier or something. Like nobody would really talk about it. But hey, you resist counters, so that's kind of cool. You resist charm, so that's kind of cool. But man, those attacks suck right kind of like how fire type is right now uh where fire type could rise up with like a season eight for fire types kind of update but as it stands yeah fire type i feel kind of sad about it um but yeah no poison type though poison type pretty strong where it is right now especially in uh, reference to the fairy type pokemon but like if uh steel type wasn't so good and ghost type wasn't so good um the poison type could be higher but they are really good so poison type gets knocked down a peg um, maybe in future updates I could see it falling to B tier, but right now it's pretty nice. Then we got Psychic type, and man, Psychic type I've got some weird feelings about too. I I almost want to give it D tier, but I think the resistance to counter damage is nice enough where I don't think it deserves that kind of treatment. I think it deserves C tier. It's a a fairly neutral type. The weaknesses to Ghost and Dark are just huge, huge problems for it. A lot of Psychic type damage is poorly enabled in Pokemon Go too. A lot of Psychic type attacks aren't that good. So it's like, hey, they're super effective into Poison and they're neutral into other stuff. Uh, but the attacks themselves aren't that good. So a lot of Psychic types, I mean, a lot of Psychic types do use them because they get Stab on it. Um, but for like distribution, right? Overall, they're not the greatest attacks around. When you think of like the best psychic type Pokemon, I feel like they're kind of carried in a way. Like when it comes to Deoxys Defense Form and Metacham, they're counter users that resist counter. And having that counter kind of circumvents some of their weaknesses too, like to uh, dark Pokemon and to steel Pokemon. So it's just a nice little combination there, right? Uh, then when it comes to like Mewtwo, Mewtwo's got Psy Strike, and Mewtwo also has that mystery box. Mew also has that mystery box situation going on too. Um, but I'd say like the majority of psychic type Pokemon, if they were fairy types instead, would just probably just straight up be better. Like they'd take on a weakness to uh, poison, and that's not good. But I think they'd gain so many other matchups in such a big way that they would just be OP. You know, people would be screaming and crying about Cresselia and and Deoxys and Metacham and Mewtwo would just be nuts. You know what I mean? Uh, but as it stands, they, they aren't fairy types. They're psychic types. And Ghost and Dark is on top. And they're, they're not really hitting anything on top super effectively stab-wise. They're not really resisting anything on top either. So yeah, here they are. Psychic type Pokemon. Uh, it doesn't really even matter, right? Then we got Rock type. And uh, yeah, Rock as a type, same as Ice. Like, so many weaknesses. So many big, glaring, terrifying weaknesses. You don't want to be a Rock-type Pokemon. Like, you got Bastiodon, right? That's probably, like, the only good Rock-type you can really think of off the top of your head. And the only reason why Bastiodon's super crazy good is, well, it's being carried by the Steel-type. And it's uh, mostly this, like, big stat product hard counter to flying type Pokemon. It makes flying type Pokemon wish they were never born when they get lined up against Bastiodon. But when Bastiodon gets lined up against a lot of neutral fights, it can go pretty south for it. And if a fighting or ground type attack, even like if, if it even gets touched by them, it just shatters. So yeah, rock type, not, not that good at all. I feel kind of sorry for the rock type Pokemon. The only saving grace would be stab boosted rock type attacks. 
But then because the rock type Pokemon themselves, I think like stat wise, the stat translation into Pokemon Go also holds back rock type Pokemon in a pretty big way. A lot of them are like offensively weighted or, you know, they're um, defensively weighted, but like almost to a fault, almost. Uh, there isn't a whole lot of balance going on with a lot of the rock type Pokemon in the translation into Pokemon Go. So that's also pretty awkward for them. And then the attacks are also not all that great outside of like Rock Slide. So rocks, they got their issues. The issues keep piling up. Um, maybe Diancy will be the crazy good ubiquitous uh, rock type in the future, or like Carbink or something. You know, getting carried by that fairy type. <laughs> yeah, but rock type defensively, Pokemon Go wise, you don't want to be it. Then we got Steel type. Yeah, that's an S tier for sure, 100%. Steel type resists two of the other S type attack types, right? It also resists two of the A tier types too. It resists Dragon and, and Poison. It, B tier types, it resists two of those on top of it, right? So, like, a lot of the best types in the game. They're getting resisted by steel type Pokemon, right? And then when it comes to offensive coverage, coverage moves that are paired with the two types that you know, are super effective into steel. Unfortunately, yes, it does have weaknesses. It does uh, resist the uh, ice and it does resist the rock. So steel type is just an extremely good type to be. Like Dialga, is it carried because of being a dragon type? No, that dragon type is getting carried by the steel subtyping. Uh, so yeah, Bastiodon, is it good because it hard counters flyers? Well, yeah, the reason why it's doing that, though, is because it's a Steel-type Pokemon. The number one Pokemon in Great League PvP, Galarian Stumpfisk, yeah, it's a Steel-type Pokemon. And it probably will always be on top because it has perfect coverage on top of that with a stab boost into one of those attacks. So unless they, like, hyper-nerf Earthquake and Rock Slide for, like, the express purpose of nerfing Galarian Stumpfisk, like, that is just never going to change. And I think it's okay for the most part. Uh, feel free to be mad about it, but yeah, no steel type though. Yeah, no, I don't think anybody can disagree that steel type is probably uh, arguably the best type to be in the game. And then finally, we have water type. Is it S tier or is it A tier? That is the question. Water as a defensive type is pretty phenomenal. It resists ice, a really good coverage move, but ice is poorly distributed right and then uh it's weak to electric and grass which aren't all that present offensively most c6 teams are going to carry a grass type attack somewhere for swampert but outside of that you know not a lot of things carry grass type moves you know so the weaknesses don't matter and the resistances are pretty nice offensive wise uh water is a really good neutral type to just kind of splash at stuff and then if you resist that that's also pretty nice um, but it's kind of awkward too, because when you think of the better like water type Pokemon, you got Swampert. Swampert's, you know, carried by how good Hydro Cannon is. Uh, and then you got Tapu Fini, which is being carried by, uh, being a fairy type Pokemon, uh, similar with Azumarill, but it really is a decent defensive type that, that splashes into stuff like almost freely. So it's kind of hard to say that water is not a super good top tier type. And then a lot of water type fast moves are pretty good at chunking, like Water Gun, I think, is a bit underrated. Waterfall is kind of fairly underrated. And then when it comes to charge moves, Hydro Cannon's just busted. Um, but Surf is mediocre enough, but it's neutral. So, man, I think I'm going to give it A tier. I can see how people would see it would be S tier, and I wouldn't disagree with them. Um, but I think for the purposes of this tier list and just making a decision, um, I think A tier is good. I think looking back at this tier list now, wrapping things up here, I stand by all these picks pretty well. I mean, there are some that could float up or down because of one thing or another, but I think this is a pretty fair tier list for the types here. Um, when you look at the D tier, I would never want to be these types. You just kind of cope with being these types, right? Uh, they got good offensive coverage, but the types themselves for a Pokemon, you don't want to be it. C tier, I could at least appreciate having that type, but I don't think I'd be too excited about it. I think I'd feel better about being a fire type. Out of these four types, I like fire type the most, but because fire type is like poorly enabled in the game right now, not a lot of fire type Pokemon have good attacks. A lot of the good fire type attacks aren't all that great. I think these guys could easily rise to B tier, maybe A tier even in the future. Uh, but as it stands, as they are right now, definitely a C tier. Um, B tier, feeling pretty fair and neutral 
Um, I think depending on how you see these Pokemon, um, you could think that they're like A tier, maybe even beyond. Um, but I think as a type, the types are fairly neutral. It's just that they have good stats or good moves or good subtypes, like really enabling the better Pokemon of these types more so than the type themselves. Um, grass is mostly there for resisting, you know, Hydro Cannon, you know, that kind of idea. A tier, A tier, a lot of them could rise up to S tier, maybe. Um, a few of them maybe could float down to B tier. Um, uh, but I think, uh, I think not a lot of people would disagree with these being like some of the better types in the game. And then when it comes to S tier, I think for Pokemon Go, the only controversial pick here would probably be the flying type. And with Walrein being knocked out and Registeel being poorly utilized right now in the Great League, uh, yeah, flying types are definitely on top. And I think going forward in the 2023 competitive season here, I think we're going to see more flying types. I think we're going to see double flying type comps. We're already seeing double flying type comps, right? So I think flying type is just kind of escalating. And if we don't get a future big bad ice type Pokemon to pull them back in, I think uh, flying types are, are definitely going to dominate in this competitive season. So that's all I got to say about the 18 Pokemon types right now. If you have anything to add to the conversation, you agree with me, you disagree with me, uh, let me know in the comments. Boost my engagement and boost this video, right? And if you like this kind of content and you want to see more like it, well, make sure to subscribe to Swag Tips. Swag Tips. I'd also like to give a special shout out to these patron supporters. If you want to support Swagman on Patreon, link in the description. I'm going to redo the water type. I can't redo the water type. I can't retake the water type section? Come on, man. Because I already placed it and it was the last thing to place. You're going to do this to me, tier list maker? I want to retake the section, bro.